This episode was sponsored by NFT Ventures Miami. Join the NFTV mailing list for the sickest drops. Good morning, Bitcoin. We're back with Adam McBride from the Adam McBride Show, and we're talking NFTs. How's it going, Adam? That's great, man. So, Adam, just really generally, how did you get into NFTs? Uh, it's, you know, I've been into crypto for since I first heard of Bitcoin. Um, the first time I heard about it, I was just captivated. And although, unfortunately, I didn't buy any at the time. Um, and a lot of people say, oh, you should have bought some. You know what? The technical aspects of buying and trading and stuff like that at that time were, were really prohibitive, you know? And so I, I've been following crypto for since, I don't even know, 2014, 2013, somewhere around then. And, um, and got into the ICO space a little bit, really thought about doing something with ICOs, uh, made coins back in the, the day. I don't know when that was. Uh, went through the whole process, but didn't know what to do with it. Um, and when the NFT started popping on my radar, I don't know, six months ago, I was like, oh, this is interesting, you know, because I get I got it right away. The idea of ownership and the transferable transferability of ownership and how people can take different cuts at different points and all these sort of things made a lot of sense to me, um, not only for the current state of NFTs, which is basically everybody says NFTs and they think about art, um, but my brain instantly goes to other things. And so I'm fascinated by the art part project and art part of it. And around January, I started getting into the art aspect of it. Um, so, but I so think you it's had so a, much more. I think it's so you much had a, more. You had a background in crypto, but you hadn't bought any Bitcoin yet. So you, are you pretty much saying like your first purchase was an NFT? Did you buy Ethereum to get an NFT? What was That's the exactly, NFT? I went down that rabbit hole. Yes. Yep. The, the answer is yes and yes. And actually, um, the way I actually got started and was forced to, you know, install the wallets and do all that sort of stuff was a guy I know on Twitter uh, put out a tweet and said, Hey, somebody, can somebody do an NFT for me? Like he wanted to give away some of his album art and, or albums and to raise money for a St. Jude's uh, children's center. And that was like seven in the morning on a Friday or something. And I'm sitting around and I go, I'll do it. I like commented two seconds. I was like, I'll do it. And just because sometimes I have to get going in some way. And so when I see that sort of opportunity where somebody needed my help or needed help, like I had no idea how to do it, right? But I knew I could figure it out. And so that got me going down the road. And that was literally that day I, you know, minted an NFT. And so you, you didn't it. have the accounts. You had to go to some That's website, right. set them up. You had the yeah. asset, you had the image or the album art. Uh, which exactly. account, what website did you go to? What'd you set up? So you like that one, I did or? it for him on OpenSea. So basically I created a, a MetaMask for him, uh, went to OpenSea, um, learned how to use at that time the IPFS. So, cause I realized, oh, well, where am I gonna store the work? He had it like in Dropbox, you know, and I, I recognize immediately the disadvantages of having that because if he deletes his Dropbox account or it gets hacked or something like this, I realized that that file, which in theory you're selling and is part of that NFT can go away, right? So then I investigated, I heard a little bit about this IPFS, but I never looked into it. So I looked into it, I went on to, um, what's it, Pinata, and set up an account there, I learned how to do that. Um, so just learn, learn, learn. It took me about a day um, to get it all set up and give, you know, said, here you go, man, here, here it is, right? So, and, so this uh, is fantastic. This is really like gold metal NFT on your first try. It has the IPFS, you're backing up the images, and yep. it has album art, has a music interest, and your friend was doing it for St. Jude's charity. So this is exactly. really, you really came out of the gate here with a winner. Uh, what <laughs> happened next? How did the market react to this, this obvious uh, well, piece he of value? Raised, actually, yeah. as I was doing it, another guy was doing it as well for him. So we, he had multiple people working on it at the same time. Uh, I think he raised like three grand in, a, in that day, you know? That's so, fantastic. I mean, that's not great. bad at all. I mean, I used to, you know, we used to do little Bitcoin fundraisers and we'd beg for a couple hundred dollars. So three grand in a day is, yes. is great. Yeah. yeah. I mean, for me, it's, it's never, well, I do so much stuff for no money. Like 90% of what I do is for free or no money or trying stuff. Um, 
and everybody's asking, what, did you make any money on that? Are you making any money? You know, and, and I don't, you know, my brain doesn't work that way for whatever reason. I don't know why. Uh, to my own detriment, probably. Uh, if I was better organized or better able to focus on the money aspect, I'm sure I'd be better off. But I'm just not, for whatever reason, I just like to do stuff that interests me. And, um, you know, when I see something like that, it super interests me. Not on, It wasn't even about St. Jude's or him or anything. It was just about this is a step that I recognize this is a step to do that the vast majority of people will never do. So then I instantly know more than 90% of the people on the planet, right? And then I do another step and I, I know more than, you know, like right now I have, you know, my brother and his friends who are in finance and stuff. I'm talking to them about NFTs. I'm talking with them about Ethereum. Like they have no idea what Ethereum, like they have no idea how to even buy it, how to store it, you know, what to do. Um, so I'm walking people down these paths, which I really enjoy, um, you know, doing that sort of stuff. So it's, it's very stuff. much like the, uh, like the wizard of Oz, you know, no one gives you the, you know, Oh, you are the one to talk about Bitcoin. You are the one to talk about NFTs. No, it's, you had the courage all along and you had the information. It was you all along. So I think it's yeah. great that you're volunteering to do this because just like Bitcoin talk and all the other spaces, it's an open space. You put your card out. You want to talk about NFTs. You get a little knowledge like you did to make your first project. And you know, you're off to, off to the races. You can make yep. as big a speech or as small a speech as you want at any kind of location and support a project or whatever you choose to do with it. So I think it's a great way to get involved in things. And yep. um, I wish more people were branching out into their hobbies like that. So many people would just watch it go by. They wouldn't you know, see like you did. This was the chance, the opportunity to try it out to have a real world project to jump into it. Uh, I remember when they were trying to teach me computer programming, uh, I was like, this is nonsense. I don't know what this is for. Why am I putting numbers in and out of an array? I don't care about your numbers. But a couple of years later, I wanted to have a blog and a blog was a PHP MySQL database thing at the time. And a friend of mine showed me a basic thing and I learned from there and I had no yeah. problem doing it when I had the goal of wanting to make a blog, when I wanted to make a movie database and I had all this stuff, I was like, oh, that's why you would sort the database this way. That's why you would store the files this way, that kind of thing. So exactly, it that's much exactly it. And, um, you know, I encourage anybody who's like, well, I'll never really learn this or that. It's like, you know what, there are the experts in this and what I've learned in almost every space have just a little bit more information than you. It's usually not a massive, uh, canyon that that can't be crossed in a few months of with concerted effort and concerted effort meaning you are interested in learning it uh, that's the way I, I look at it and you know I've learned all sorts of stuff we can go as far down the rabbit hole as you want of you know trying to find lost nfts and all this sort of stuff um, I've gone down that rabbit hole where now I can interact with contracts and figure out how to interact with contracts that you're supposedly not to be able, you can't interact with and do all this sort of stuff and uh, I've learned that just from interest, right? And reaching out to people and other people saying, oh, you got to do this. Oh, you got to do that. And you learn all this stuff along the way. And it's so, for me, it's, a, it's super interesting. And the space is so exciting. I mean, it's just, I couldn't be more pumped, not only about the NFT space, but the whole crypto space. Yes, learning is all about trying and failing and being able to come back. And most people aren't ready for that. And also with the internet, when you fail, sometimes you have to fail publicly and you have to <laughs> take it on the back and you're like, yeah, I was wrong about this and it went the other way and I'm sorry, guys. And you yep. just keep moving and keep doing the things that brought you to it in the first place. So after you made your first NFT, uh, where did you go from there? Did you become a collector? Did you become a creator? You have a, a more artist that you worked with? What kind of things did you do? Well, what I did after that, basically, other than just kind of messing around and seeing how... Um, OpenSea works because I think OpenSea for me, for most people, is the place where most people can can easily access it. Meaning, minting an NFT on OpenSea is super easy. Uh, you could literally take a family photo and mint it as an NFT in ten minutes on OpenSea. Um, the people there, when I had issues or whatever, uh, were very available on Twitter, so I was able to like talk to people, um, which was helpful and. So, yeah, so after that, I said, well, I have a YouTube channel and I said, well, you know what, what I want to do, like where I see NFTs going uh, are not just in the art space, but in the ownership in general, it's ownership of everything. Um, 
And the way I put it to like my brother or people who are interested, I say, look, imagine you want to buy a beach house, but you don't have $2 million. You have a million dollars to invest in a beach house, but you don't have two, but you want the 200 or the $2 million beach house. What if you could immediately access people all over the world who also want a part of that beach house to take ownership in it financially? Um, and you can take some of your risk off the table and they can invest risk in that beach house with the potential of a payoff when that beach house sells. I'm like, this is the potential of NFTs, right? To, to make that transaction seamless without a bank or without an intermediary. Like for me, this is like at the base, like simplest case I can describe to somebody. That's the one I describe because most people can understand that transactionally. They don't know how it would work. Like that seems complex and stuff. But the idea is that this infrastructure could be built where this will become easy to do. And that to me is so exciting, like completely exciting. So for my 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 face or my YouTube page, uh, YouTube account or YouTube channel, I said, let me do let me create an NFT for the YouTube channel where I divide that NFT into whatever, a couple hundred uh, coin or NFTs and try and sell those and then guarantee people a percentage. Like if I sold 50% of my YouTube channel, uh, each one of those would represent, say if I did 100 or 50, say I did 50, each one of those would represent 1% of the total income of the YouTube channel. Um, cause it's very easy to track income on YouTube. You go to YouTube, you check out your ad revenue and there it is. Right. And just make it so, so I did this. It had no success, got no traction. Cause I have a small YouTube channel. doesn't mean anything, but I actually was really interested in releasing this cause I wanted to be the first person to do that. I wanted to say, look, like, I know this is never going to work for me. My YouTube channel is nothing. Nobody cares about Adam McBride, but if you are Jake Paul or you're ninja and you want to raise money. Uh, this is a way you can raise money like immediately. Uh, it's possible right now, even with the limited, um, ability of the smart contracts right now, uh, it can be done right now. Um, so I wanted to do that. So that was the next thing I did, um, just to kind of do it. You know, well, I think it's fantastic. You tried to tokenize your YouTube channel. Yeah. Uh, were you selling how much percent of the ad revenue were you selling? We're selling uh, so I sold 50% to zero. Okay. People. Nobody bought it. <laughs> but it, nobody at all I wanted to get the idea out there like to say look guys this is an idea that I know it's not gonna work for me because nobody cares about me or my YouTube channel but it's possible um, and honestly the did, thing did you buy any of your own shares no I did not buy uh, I don't know you gotta think about that maybe that's the way to invest, do it right promote that in yourself way. yeah yeah I mean I, I just look at it the whole space I look at it and I say to myself because this has been an idea of mine for a long time which is you have a, imagine this scenario. You have a middle school kid who plays basketball. He's great in middle school. Like people are saying, oh, this kid's gonna go to the pros. He's amazing, right? But he's poor and his family are poor, right? What's, I, I always thought, well, maybe there's a way we could do, I, I was thinking about it back in the day with like um, crowdfunding. Maybe you could do a crowdfunding, something like that. But now you think about it now, you could tokenize that kid's future earnings in the NBA to give him and his family money now when he's 12 years old. Something like that is completely possible right now. And I know people will say, oh, but you're selling a human. No, you're not. Like if he never goes to the NBA, it never pays anything, right? But it gives people power to actually like take control of various aspects of their lives that they never had the ability to do before and monetize it. And so like, there are just millions of ideas like that, but this, there were just so many that were clicking through my head. Um, and the first one I could do was the YouTube channel. So, so, so what did you do next? Did you go out and find some more of these projects to interview? Did you invest in more NFTs? Did you try other platforms? Uh, you know where what, did you go from You know from what there? hit next was, um, I started making contacts on Twitter and one of them hit me up when the moon cats happen and i don't know if you know what how you you're aware of what happened with the moon cats i generally know there's kind of crypto punks and moon cats and i think they're both forgotten and then rediscovered but that's right that's my so, general so to give your product. listeners yeah. a, a quick summary in 2017 um just after crypto punks were released which most of you've probably heard of crypto punks like two weeks later the moon cats it's called moon cat rescue moon cat rescue.com was released couple guys so, so hold on it was called rescue originally officially 
Oh, was it? Okay. Oh, no, I'm asking. Like, no, is it's it... called Mo uh, Mooncat Rescue. Wait, okay. Mooncatrescue.com like... is the All actual right. like, web address. When they launched uh -oh. it. So, the, okay, because I, I thought there was like a, the project that rescued them was called Mooncat Rescue and they'd gone back and found them. But no, you're saying officially when the project launched, they're like, hey, you can rescue these moon cats. Exactly. So they cool. had, the web page was up, still live, but it was non-functional. Um, when it was functional in 2017, you could go on the website, you could rescue a moon, ca a moon cat, which took a certain amount of computing power. You had to do like a, ca your computer had to run a calculation, it took about a minute, minute and a half, and you would get, be presented a moon cat, and then you could rescue the moon cat for only the, the cost of ETH, right? So there are 25,000 moon cats, maximum could be rescued out of like 4 billion combinations. So they're all different combinations of Genesis cats and more rare and less rare, right? So in 2017, you could have minted every moon cat in existence for, I don't know, $300, right, in ETH. Um, so, but this was a dead project, it had died basically six months after they did it because anything anybody did in 2017, except maybe the punks, all died. Like all those projects, nobody cared in 2017. So a guy uh, on Twitter- don't, don't forget the chorus. There was a chorus in the crowd going, you're doing an ICO, ICOs yeah, right. are scams. ICOs this is scams. an ICO, you are a scammer. Uh, because if you tried to do anything creative, especially in 2017, both as the ICOs went up and as they went down, Yep. from Not mainly the bitcoin community but all the other communities anything you're doing was you're a scam you're an ico yep I'm sure i tell you the more i've looked at, same, it's man. interesting the more i've dug into nfts and this space looking back all the way to 2014 15 and even earlier it is amazing because when you're on uh looking on the ethereum blockchain looking for projects between 2015 and 2017 50% of them are either gambling and the other 50 are Ponzi, Ponzi schemes. I mean, it is, it's overwhelming the number of things that are just Ponzi schemes. And they say, they say they're Ponzi schemes, right? I mean, it's like people are honest about it, but I'm like, wow, is this the human race where we're so interested in the, the, uh, you know, get rich thing, but that's what it is. And so, yeah, those projects had a big headwind, right? A huge headwind. Plus they had the headwind of, you know, it's easy to get a man. You can set up a MetaMask in five minutes right here. Back then, not so easy, right? Um, so to get back to it, I saw it on Twitter. A guy hit me up on Twitter, said, yo, go now. Go do this. He sent me a DM. I went on, and I get on, and there's like, I check the total count. There's like 19,500 cats left, right? And I was like, ah, what is this? Out of total 25, I'm like, what is this? I go. I have a snack with my kid, right? He's homeschooling. I have a snack with my kid. I come back. I refresh the page. There's 10,000 or 9,500. I'm like, holy cow, 20 minutes, you know, 10,000 gone in 20 minutes. I was like, let's go. And I, I get my kid on his, on his computer because you got to scan them, right? So it takes about a minute. We all have like five tabs open. We're, you know, recycling each one to try and get a new cat. And I'm just hitting buy. I'm buying as fast as I can, right? Little did I know, this is a lesson learned in crypto. If you don't put in the right gas fee, you're getting front run by other people who are put, so other people are putting in fast gas. I'm just hitting go, I'm hitting buy. So all of mine are average gas, right? Push comes up, I probably put in 30 orders for these mooncats or before it went to zero and I got five, <laughs> right? So lesson uh, learned, I still got five gotta, and I felt lucky. You gotta to put five. the fast gas on apparently. Yeah. I had no gotta idea, put the, man, but. You gotta put the fast gas yeah. on. Uh, when there's a rush like that, you gotta put the fast gas. And, um, but that got me, it was the most fun, you know, with all this COVID stuff going on, it was the most fun hour I've had in the last year. My kid and I yelling back and forth. He's like, you know, he's sending me the, the things over, we're, we set up a Google Doc. He's sending them. He's like, get the yellow one. Get the yellow one. I think it's rare. <laughs> you know, that type of stuff. <laughs> it was super fun. It was See, super and that's, that's what this is really about is like the joy of collecting. And it doesn't matter if moon cats are like the best art in the world or the most valuable in the world or any of these things. It's that you and your son were trying to collect them all just like Pokemon, just like baseball yep. cards, and that you got a couple. 
You know, exactly. you've got a handful. Those are yours. You value them now, like up yep. or down, whatever. And even if you sell them or whatever, you had those original five and you can say, I had the yellow one and the red one. And, you know, it went up and down or get lost yep. it or whatever. It's that collectible thing that, that matters. Yeah. And so so that was the Mooncats really got me um, you know, pumped about it. And that got me into this questioning, like, wow, if, well, if the Mooncats were. You know, and and did you did you post about it like after the guy sent it to you were you all over like Mooncats oh yeah. Twitter like oh yeah absolutely okay. all over it because you know the um the people who started it didn't even they they weren't even, their account was dead not even on Twitter and so immediately went into this like oh what's going on can we find these guys that's where I like to get in and like can I find these develop can I find the people who developed it um and but they were back on within a, a couple of days they got back on quickly. Um, and they really did a great job of managing their community, um, which I see certain projects that have, have been found or come back. You don't get great management from from the developers. And, and I think it's just a different skill set that some people have and some people don't to create a sense of community, understand that eh, maybe it's not you. Maybe you're not going to make money on this deal, but you're going to have a bit of a legacy, which is wonderful. And you're going to become somewhat famous or at least you're going to be able to put this on your resume that people are going to really be like, wow, you were the moon cat guys, you know? And I think that has a lot of weight um, in the development community and stuff like that, that I think some people passed on trying to make, you know, a couple dollars. And um, I've seen it with a couple of projects where these guys are not great at managing their community or are not interested in the community. And, you know, it's unfortunate in my opinion. Well, it's a it's a strange thing when your startup that kind of failed comes back to from the dead four years later, and and you didn't do anything to revive it. You weren't part it, of a you know let's spread the word or whatever, and it just pops right up. So I, I can imagine it's not even surprise. strange. It never happens, right? It never happens. I said to Travis from Cura Cards, and I've said to um, uh, this this other one, which uh, my friend and I just rediscovered called um, uh, Ether Waifus. I said to them, this never ha you recognize, recognize this never happens. I went to business school. I've been in business my entire life. I've never heard of a business coming back from the dead ever like this never happens. Uh, so enjoy it, you know, and, and count yourself one of the handful, that, you know, because this is it. These are the, you know, the, the handful of projects that it's happened to um, count yourself very, very lucky, very fortunate, you know. But it's exciting for them, and uh, as you know, it's very exciting. And, um, and, and if you don't know, we we rediscovered this project. I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, uh, which is like basically the first um, what they call waifu. It's like it's like anime. Looks like anime, but with smaller eyes. I had no idea. I've seen the the pictures. It looks like paper dolls for yeah, anime. Yeah, like, like I sent it to my kid, dolls. and I'm like, is this anime? He's like, that's not anime. <laughs> I have no idea. But if you know, the community knows what it is, right? And so there were these ones called, I think, like Crypto Waifus or whatever. They were there and on Twitter and semi-successful. They're on OpenSea. And, you know, a guy I know on Twitter who I'm friendly with, and we go back and forth trying to find old NFT projects. He sent me this one. He's like, look at that. Check this one out. Checked it out. Looked at it. Looked at the project. Looked at the number of cards that were distributed and or NFTs. And, and they still had a working website. Um, so many of these projects, it's so funny. The guys buy the URL for a year, you know, but these guys had it, it's still there. It didn't work, you know, couldn't connect. So you had to interact with the contract and I managed to get a hold of them. I reached out, I found the artist, I found the developers, two guys interested in it and, um, reached out to them. And before I put out like anything like, Hey guys, go look at this contract, go buy or whatever, or do whatever you want. Um, I actually talked to the, to the founders. Um, to talk to him about it. Cause I wanted to say, I wanted to find out that they were interested in, you know, taking care of their community. Cause I didn't want to point people to a contract that was going to be basically a dead thing. And, uh, and they were super excited, super excited. Developer lives in Japan, works in Japan. And the artist is like typical struggling artist. never made a dollar, you know, just barely hanging on parents telling him to quit. You're an idiot. Stop doing your stupid art. Go get a doctor's degree or whatever you're doing, right? And uh, and they were, but they were on board. And I I put it out there. Um, it blew, I mean, blew up. 
and within a day, I want to say they had 60,000 in sales and it's now over a hundred thousand dollars in sales, um, for those guys, which I mean, it's impactful for a normal person, uh, in America, right? If you're living in Indonesia and you're struggling to, to make a living as an artist, this is a life changer. And for me, that has been the most rewarding, like of all the stuff that's like, wow, you actually, you know, breathed air back into this project that you know when they built it in 2017 like this was the idea like hey we can make a living selling art online and here we are you know four years later they you know he still can't make a living selling art but now he can you know and that to me is awesome you know so after you found the moon cats and then later on you found the waifus you just kind of became this archaeologist for old nfts like you had the first success the excitement of the market and then, yep. um, you know, the success later on helping out the artists, getting them recognized and the money. And even uh, I applaud you there a little bit of protectivity of your community there. You didn't want to send them down a dead end to a dead project. You wanted yep. to send them to a project that had some kind of future life or this guy can make more art because you contributed, not just like you send Ethereum to the vending machine and it's just dead. It just sits right. there. You wanted some action. So yeah. uh, what did you do next after you found the moon cats? You know, after that, I recognized that for me, the most interesting thing I could do, at least for a little while, a month or two, would be to try to find old projects. I thought for me, I mean, I, I've always considered myself a bit of a, a detective. Um, and so I, I was just like, look, this is where if you get something right, uh, you can gain, if you find one, you can gain the most from it. And whether that's you know, prestige or potentially money, um, whatever it may be, this, and, and it feeds me. Like I got, I, and there's no doubt, I spent easily 200 hours looking for old projects, easily. Well, th this is I'll a treasure. spend 12 this hours a, a day looking for a project. This is a treasure hunt, right? There's it's literally potentially gold there. There's a map, there's a bunch of twists and turns, there's developers, there's yeah. marketing people, there's web pages, there's all these different ways to get at these old projects. I mean, if you really even wanted to, you could, I don't know, look through the Ethereum blockchain for something different. And, you know, if you found something different for all it could know, it could lead to one of these uh, treasure boxes, right? Exactly. And I've gone down, trust me, a lot of rabbit holes, a lot. Um, starting with, you know, Google and then going down all sorts of GitHubs and God knows what else. Um, everything I could think of. Um, and I mean, the reality is we've found one. I found hundreds but one that made sense, right? You know, we found ones is like, it's a unicorn that you feed ETH and it talks to you. And I'm like, ah, you know, and then I mean, just stuff like that, right? We found one anime project and I tweeted about it a couple of weeks, maybe a week ago or five days ago. I said, we're, we're hot on this track. Like I might have the first anime project on blockchain uh, or on the Ethereum blockchain. And I believe it is. The issue is, is that you can't see the cards and it was never really released, right? They had a website, that website's now been repurposed, right? Um, but it was, man, I, we, my friend and I were just looking at it going, mm, because the developer is like top shelf. I mean, he's like semi-famous dude. The, the artist is like a famous dude. And you're like, mm, if this one just worked, this would be amazing. But it didn't. It didn't tick the boxes, you know. And uh, yeah, we found literally dozens and dozens of projects, but you know, not not ones that I could you know comfortably say, hey, this is this is going to make sense from uh, you know going and interacting with the contract, buying it or whatever. Yeah, that's rare, very rare. They, do, you, do you have any tips for me of old projects you remember? <laughs> I just know all the ones people are talking about. I've, I've heard the great story of that. I think it's called Etheria. And the mm -hmm. guy was a developer and he sold land in a video yeah. game. And what I love about this story, he has his you know normal one, it's running, you can buy the land. And the people come along, they, they buy all the land. You know They're very excited. And then what I've heard is there's an older version of the project that was very similar that he launched and he kind of forgot or he moved on to the new version as, as yeah. programmers will do. 
And what's so great about these, these new collectors and whether they're collectors or they're just trying to make money, but these new profiteers, uh, yep. they bought all the old land too. So I just, I love the story because the guy, he got paid for the land he was selling and they even bought land he wasn't selling and yeah. he's just some developer guy. So I'm really excited for like the Ethereum project, which I think is the first NFT uh, on the Ethereum blockchain. Yeah, it looks so. like the that as of right now, that's pretty much confirmed, and enough people like myself have been looking to pretty much confirm, at least on the Ethereum blockchain, that's the first NFT in existence. And basically, that was a dude building a project in his mom's basement. I mean, that's literally what it is. It's a a dude who's like, I'll make a Lego style um, map, four hundred fifty tiles on the map, and this is going to be great, you know, building it in 20, this is old, old 2015, right? And released it the end of October, 2015, released it. No, zero people. I mean, 0.0, .0 people interested in this thing, right? Zero. And what happened, the tr whole story is, is version 0, 0.0, like didn't even work. He uploaded it on the blockchain and it didn't, didn't even work. Uh, totally broken contract, right? Now, this is all learned after the fact, right? What happened was his version 1.2 was the working contract. So the people who had bought in had bought 1.2. So when it was rediscovered, um, and I, this was one for me, same deal, different dude DMs me, go now, bro, go now, right? And when the guy uh, issued it in 2015, the price was one ETH, right? Which in 2015 was probably, I don't know, $3. <laughs> right or five dollars um for a tile right and nobody was buying in 2015 well one eth now i mean it's two grand right um i didn't have two grand in my metamask i was like oh man if i it's gonna take me it, I, I can't do it he's like they're going fast go now there's only five left i'm like I, it's not gonna i can't do it i literally i would but i can't i don't have the money in my wallet right now and i missed out a bunch of my friends got in so they basically bought a tile each. And this was like you said, rightly version 1.2 was the one that everybody was using, but then they just look in his account and they see, Oh, well, there was one from six months earlier or six days earlier version 1.1, uh, which is wide open. Like, Oh, <laughs> I think maybe the owner had like one tile taken. All the tiles are there. So everybody rushed in about, you know, all those tiles up. Um, and then they did discover 0, 0.0, that original one that was broken, like didn't even work. Um, the owner of it, though, the, the developer, he went in and like pre-bought like all of them. He was just trying to take it out uh, completely because he was like, look, that one doesn't even work. Like it's broken. I can't even tell you if you're ever going to be able to transfer a tile. Like it doesn't even work. Um, but yeah, needless to say, in about, fifth, I mean, probably five hours. Uh, that dude went from his project making $300 to making $1.5 million in about two hours, two or three hours from the time it was discovered to every single tile on both those levels, 1.1 and 1.2, being all sold for an ETH apiece. Um, and he became a millionaire in, in a couple hours. Um, quite, quite incredible. And... You know, I wish I had one. I, I do believe there's some, some long-term value there, uh, but we'll see. We'll see. I mean, you see, with the NFT dump over the last couple of weeks, there's been a, quite a price drop, and you, you might be able to pick one up for three or four ETH right now if you wanted one, and I, I don't think that's a bad investment. That is just unbelievable. It's yeah. great to hear the details on that story, and congratulations to the programmer for the one. It really is. I mean, he, really it, unfortunately, and, you know, I don't know the guy personally, and, you know, I wish him absolutely all the best. And obviously he built something that's revolutionary. He deserves, to, and people are interested now, he deserves to make money off of it. But I think he's mismanaged his community. Like on a level of, like which one did a good job? Mooncats, great job. Poor job, the guy from ETH, uh, or Etheria, sorry. Etheria, rather than be like, you know, 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 .2, we'll figure it out. We're all one Etheria community. He put out the tweet, which is like 1.1. I do not support it. It is not the official contract and go figure it out yourselves. And, you know, I just, it was the wrong play in my view. Like he had the opportunity. Yeah. It doubles the number of tiles, but who cares? Like you had nothing a day ago. You literally had nothing a day ago. 
now people are interested in your stuff, you have the opportunity to build a, com a community of devout followers who have a vested interest in your project. Um, but look, it's a different st skill set. Doing something like that, not everybody can do that. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, I think he handled it poorly. Um, but it doesn't change what it is. And people can still trade and have. They've started Discord groups and communities and all this sort of stuff. Um, but it's one that I think, looking back on it, he'll probably regret the way he handled it. Well, let's, let's hope he turns it around and it can be very difficult to deal with success. Uh, oh, sudden yeah. success like that and also i really agree with you the different kind of people a, a programmer is a very different kind of person than a marketing person or a 100%. ceo or any other kind of person at a startup so uh yeah. to have that all thrust upon them i don't totally. i don't envy them that totally so. and I, I mean i wish i could talk to the dude because i mean i wish i could I, i'm sure people maybe have but maybe he's isolated and doesn't get it and, and i just it's like he's talking about, oh, well, I'm going to build version 1.3 and it's going to be great. And I was like, nobody cares about 1.3. Nobody even cares about 1.1 and 1.2. Like, nobody cares about it. They don't care. Like, if you've ever seen what it is, like, you can't even interact with it. If you want to pull up, put up, like, the only things built on it are, like, these tiny little, like, horses. You can't even build anything in it. You can't even interact with it. It's like nothing, right? It's strictly there for the historical uh, value of it. That's what it is. And he's talking about how they're going to be able to build easier and make Lego. P I'm like, nobody cares about that, man. They care that you were the first. That's what they want. Don't build new versions. That's the, that's the worst thing you can do. Keep it right there. Like in glass in the NFT museum. That's what it's all about, you know, but he doesn't get that. And it's, you know, I don't know. It is what it is, right? He gets to do what he wants. He, he, he developed it, but, um, yeah, if he was talking to me and he was my friend, uh, that's what I'd tell him to do. Man, just preserve what you built, which is historically significant. Support those people who are interested in the historical significance of your NFT. That's what you should do. But So I Etheria mean. is number one. Uh, yep. CryptoPunks is number two. Crypto oh. Mooncats is number three, but it's not over, is it? No. Uh, what happens next? You got And we had a pretty good listing there, right? Etheria... The crypto yep. punks, the moon cats, and then the crypto kitties, which for me, you know, that was the big one. I mean, I remember when crypto kitties hit in 2017 and right. Ethereum blockchain was overloaded, serious projects of financial uh, wealth and value couldn't move their money and do things because of these popular crypto kitties. But crypto kitties uh, blocking punks the blockchain. and cats and Ethereum were all b before that. Uh, but what happened? Well, next? there were a couple. How, there's how another one thrown came? in the mix there, uh, which is sure. interesting. Before. Um, well, for years now, let's say for years, CryptoPunks were thought to be the first NFT on the Ethereum blockchain, right? And so they, they, it just was, that was what it was, right? Then Ethereum hit. Um, and so people recognize, oh, no, no, this is the first NFT. And then people said, well, CryptoPunks are the first art NFT. Okay, maybe they were. Then Curo Cards hits, right? So... Basically, uh, also a guy I follow on Twitter, he's, he finds uh, in a blog post, or somebody put a blog post and he's reading the comments of a blog post from 2017. Somebody's like, I love the new Curio cards. He's like, Curio cards? And there's a link, pushes the link, takes him to a, a, a web page, a functioning web page where you see these art, this art. And sure enough, he dives in, uh, he finds the contract. And sure enough, about two weeks before CryptoPunks was released, Curio Cards, which you were part of, was released on the Ethereum blockchain. So this is now the first art NFT project. Um, as far as we know, there's still a possibility that somebody else could be, you know, sneak in there. But it's pretty unlike I'd say it's pretty unlikely now as we've had, what, a month and a half or more of people like myself with a vested interest in finding an earlier version or earlier something and haven't been able to do it. So it, it's probably not going to happen. But when that curio card um, was discovered, when the curio cards were discovered, um, you know, I, you, if you if you're in the NFT space, you have to be on Twitter because Twitter is where all of the conversation happens. And again, it was the same thing again for me, a DM go fast because these are already all gone basically. And by the time I got there, there was one card left. 
um, I think it was card 10 was still left. And it had a, so all the other cards, you know, from, you know, 1 to 30 were all gone. Card 10 was still there. And card 10 had 100,000 units. And I'm looking at the contract going, 100,000? And yeah, it was only $5 each. And you could buy as many as you want plus the gas fee. But I was like, at $5 each, so say I buy 100 and it's $500. But how much is it? I do, I, my brain just does the math. 100,000 times five is 500. You're telling me this card alone, each of these is going to be, I was like, there's no way. I just passed. I was like, I'm not going to do it. Big mistake. Because the contract had it built in to burn the rest once it got up to 2,000. Uh, so once it got to 2,000, it burned all the rest. And the rest is history because I got zero. <laughs> and uh, yeah, card 10 had 2,000 uh, 2, cards. So Curio. Yeah, Curio was discovered. And um, after I, I, I got into that, uh, when, when that happened, that was, I don't know, eight in the morning. Um, well, that's, that's, that's awesome. He put it into the contract to burn it at that yeah. level for that card at that one. Because uh, you're plugging along and you think it's not going to go. And then it gets to 2000 and, and then the rest of them go or it closes down something. Like, and did your friends down. message you? Or are they like, holy crap, it stopped sending cards? No, or, I, 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 I then I was like, I'm not going to get it. He's like, you sure? <laughs> now i know better just get it just get it and uh, now i know better and um but it was so interesting to me that one because of the history like I, i'm all about at least right now there's so many nft projects i i recognize from the icos in the past and all my history of life tells me that the vast majority are going to be worthless or near worthless so what are the things that are going to make uh projects or nfts significant to people over the long term and for me with the the earliest you know uh, projects having that historical significance is a big deal for me uh, for me i mean i might be wrong and there might be projects that work like beeple or whatever which aren't uh you know historic although i guess is ours historic historically significant now but other projects that aren't historically significant do i think those have a better or worse chance of stay, keeping value, and I think they have a worse chance. So for me, when I heard about Curio and I heard about the um, historical significance, meaning it was before CryptoPunks, um, I got vastly interested. So within like an hour, I had sent out DMs to probably you and a bunch of other people, and uh, I'd heard back from people already. And I started talking to people about it and just went down the rabbit hole of who's involved in this project, who's involved in it. Like I found Travis. I think I sent Travis a, you couldn't DM him, but I sent him a message on Twitter like, hey, Travis. And I said, I, I talked to people. I said, look, Travis was on like a day ago. <laughs> you know, he was on, he's going to be on in a minute. Like he's going to be on uh, and he's going to learn what's happening. And uh, so I went down that rabbit hole of finding out as much as I could about it. And uh, just, it's just amazing. Yeah. So very early and obviously, um, way ahead of its time for sure. Well, I think we're going to talk more about curio cards in the next interview, but now that you've kind of exhausted being an archeologist for old projects, are you going to continue searching for projects or what are you going to do in the future? Uh, what are you going to focus on next? It's funny because, um, for me, it's really hard for me to, I'm oh, sorry. We got a motorcycle going by. Um, it's really hard for me to stop uh, doing something that is so enticing to me. Uh, so I'm still looking, but I'm trying to stop at this point in time. I'm trying to stop. Like after a couple hundred hours of diving in, I'm trying to stop. I haven't been able to stop completely yet. Because honestly, when I go into it, it consumes my entire life. Com like completely consumes. Like everything else just becomes nothing to me. Uh, so it's n I recognize that that's not a very good way to live my life, but that's just the way I'm built. Um, so I'm trying to stop. Uh, and I think this will probably be my last week uh, of kind of looking, not hardcore looking, but yeah. So this will be my last, last like week of looking. And um, after that, I'm not exactly sure. I'm going to a, a crypto conference a um, couple weeks in Miami. Um, and I'm not exactly sure what my next step is with with crypto or nft i'm not exactly sure 
Well, don't don't feel bad about that. Uh, the the fugue state or whatever you're getting into it reminds me a lot of what Andreas Antonopoulos told me back in the day about Bitcoin. He was mm -hmm. like, when when I found it, uh, I I couldn't eat, I couldn't sleep, I ignored my wife and my family. Mm -hmm. I stayed in my room and I just read everything about it. And you know, he was trying to break it. He was trying to theorize different models and really understand it. And and when he got to the end of it, he was like, Bitcoin is great. You know, that's what he came up with. And it seems for years it would be NFTs are great, but that same kind of uh, thinking about it from different angles. And like you said earlier, it could be used for a deed, for a house. Other people have said it could be used for a ticket, uh, like a golden Absolutely. ticket. You could go to all the concerts and the, the thing, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And there's just tons of other opportunities that haven't been used yet for NFTs. And I think when you looked at it at that level, uh, you might have seen all those opportunities and, and seen them all at once, like the matrix. And it's just so overwhelming. Uh, yeah. to see that i know i felt that with bitcoin it was like a swiss army knife i was like oh it's it's payments and it's store of value and it's uh you know cryptographically proven and it's censorship resistant and it's just all these different things and you're like what do i use to sell it first like what do i <laughs> what do i build a company and where do i work in this thing what i want to you know i want to do it all right yeah so, and, and it's so well if you look at the history of bitcoin or ethereum or whatever most of it doesn't work right most of it fails and so that's very like well what do i do i could do everything right and you realize that well if you're going to build like me i like building you know doing businesses and stuff trying new things it's probably going to fail right um just because that's the way the nature of you know everything um certainly business so i'm not exactly sure but i do know that the space um is so exciting and we're just at the most baby of baby steps so what I tell people who are like, oh, it's too late to get into ETH. I'm like, no, it's not. Like nobody even knows how to buy it yet. You're waiting for the ETF to come out so you can buy it. Like you have no idea. We're, we're at baby steps. I am a true, true believer that in Web, th web 3.0 is going to revolutionize the world we live in. And we are at day, literally day one. Like, yes, people have bought up stuff and there's like lots of hype and speculation. But we have no idea where it's going to go. Nobody knows. Um, and I know enough about, you know, the history of the Internet in 1999 to know that nobody could predict that everybody would have a, uh, you know, a video production facility in their pocket and be willing to make videos for free to put on for unlimited consumption for everybody on the planet. Like that was not possible. Zero people thought about that in 1999. Zero. Like it was impossible. It would have cost, you know, everybody... I talked to about that very thing says, oh, the production studio alone would run you half a million dollars. It was impossible to even think about. Um, but here we are. It happened and nobody could have predicted it. Like nobody on the planet could have predicted that. But it happened. The same is going to happen in Web.3.0 and we have no idea what it is. Like anybody, we're just guessing. We're guessing. And we're guessing wrong because we don't even see it. We don't even see it. We can't see it. It's impossible to see it. And it's just being built right now. We're at the very, very start. And that's exciting. If you want to be in that space, and I do want to be in the space, it's just exciting because it's going to be amazing. Well, it sounds excited, and I'm excited too. And I think it's a great note to end on. Adam, where can people check out your podcasts and your Twitter? Uh, where can they get more information about your work? Well, I think if you just punch in Adam McBride on Google, you'll find me. Um, Adam A. McBride at Twitter. Uh, the Adam McBride Show on YouTube, um, Adam McBride Show podcast. You can find me there. All right. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, man. Appreciate and, it. And uh, everyone, make sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe down below. Until next time, bye-bye. This episode was sponsored by NFT Ventures Miami. Become an NFTV artist. Sign up today. Easy bit. Easy bit. Easy bit. Bitcoin ATMs. Easy bit.